This video will cover daily cleaning and long-term maintenance of the 114P myograph system. Cleaning should be done after every experiment, and with daily cleaning, very little long-term maintenance is required. We're going to start with daily cleaning at the end of your experiment. At the conclusion of your experiment, you should remove the vessel and the sutures from the chamber, and you should turn off heat using either the software or the interface. You can then remove the buffer from your chamber as well as the P1 bottle on the interface. Secure the bottle cap and place the calibration shunt on the chamber. You should then change your pressures for P1 to 150 and P2 to 70. Turn on pressure and make sure that flow is on, which will then push all of the buffer into the P2 waste bottle. You can check your lines to make sure that the, there is only air in the lines and no more buffer. Once that is done, you can turn off pressure and then open the P1 bottle cap. You will then place 100 mils of water in the P1 bottle and secure this bottle cap again. Using the same pressures, turn on pressure again with flow on and let this run for 15 to 20 minutes which should push your double distilled water through your system back into your P2 bottle. While you are letting this run, you can clean the chamber itself. You will wash the chamber three times with double distilled water, following the third rinse of the chamber with distilled water, you can then Add approximately 10 mils of water to your bath again. And we can clean the glass cannulas while the water continues to run through your system. You will use a syringe with a blunt 18 gauge needle tip and you can connect it to the back side of the P1 tubing. You will then draw two to five mils of water back into the syringe. By drawing water back through the syringe, you are less likely to clog the tip of the cannula. You are not going through the pressure transducer, so you do not have to worry about how much pressure you are adding at this time. You will then switch to the P2 side and again draw two to five mils back through the cannula. After you have drawn water back through the lines, you can then empty the bath one more time. You should then repeat the process, drawing air back through the lines to ensure that your cannula lines and tubing are clear. Repeat for the P2 side. After 15 or 20 minutes have passed, you can stop the pressure and empty the P1 bottle of the distilled water. You can reattach the bottle with nothing in it 
and we will repeat the process of pushing air through the lines to ensure that no buffer or water remains in the lines. Turn on pressure and make sure it reaches 150 and 70. You will let this run until the lines are dry. Once the lines are dry and there's no more water in the lines, you can then turn off pressure, remove and clean the two interface bottles, and reconnect the tubing in the chamber, removing the calibration shunt and reconnecting the tubing for your next experiment. When cleaning your chamber cover after an experiment, you can usually just rinse with distilled water. And then wipe down with a chem wipe to clean the, the cover. You can also connect your vacuum to the different ports, ensuring that no dried buffer will stay in there and begin to clog the lines. If you need to clean this deeper, you can use 8% acetic acid to wipe down the cover surface, followed by a thorough water wash with distilled water. For a deeper clean of the system, we recommend using 8% acetic acid. This is not necessary after every experiment. Typically, if you see salt deposits start to accumulate in the chamber, that's when it's a good time to do a deeper clean. But make sure if you do use acetic acid that you do a thorough water wash after the exposure to the acetic acid. You will fill the chamber with acetic acid and let it sit for two to three minutes. While it is sitting there, you can use a cotton swab to rub down the edges of the chamber. Be careful when doing this not to severely hit the force transducer side. After two minutes, you can remove the acetic acid and then do three thorough water washes of the chamber. Fill it to the top. and then empty the chamber. For a thorough cleaning of the inside lines and the cannulas itself, you can use a syringe with the 18 gauge blunt needle tip and a bit of tubing, draw up some of the acetic acid and connect to the three-way valve. When you are doing this, you need to make sure that the interface is connected to the chamber with a myograph cable and you keep an eye on the pressures that you are adding. You can very easily exceed 200 and 250 millimeters of mercury when you're pressing with your finger. So we are now going to push some acetic acid through the lines while keeping an eye that we do not exceed 200 millimeters of mercury. So we are doing P1 right now and pushing the acetic acid through the lines. You really only need a, a mill or two of the acetic acid. And once you have done that, you can then connect to the P2 side and repeat the process. Again, now we are looking at the pressure reading for the P2 transducer. We do not want to exceed 200 and especially 250. Again, one mil should be more than enough. But make sure that you repeat the process with double distilled water multiple times after you do this to ensure that you don't have acid left in the lines. After doing this, you do want to make sure that you wash the chamber again 
with double distilled water as you will have pushed some acetic acid into the chamber. If any hydrophobic reagents were used, you can clean the system with 96% ethanol or a weak detergent solution such as tree pole. In the case of toxic or highly resistant chemicals, you can incubate the system with one molar hydrochloric acid for three minutes. In either case of the above, make sure that you do a thorough cleaning with double distilled water before letting the system sit. If you begin to notice red or brown discolorations in your chamber, there is a thorough cleaning guide in this section of the 114 user guide. In maintaining the force transducer on the chamber, you must always be cautious when handling this cannula mount or the transducer arm itself. After cleaning, make sure that there is clear grease surrounding this transducer arm coming from the housing. If you notice that it has been cleaned away, you can take some of the clear grease that came with your system, use a pipette tip, and apply more grease to that pinhole. When maintaining the pressure transducers in the glass cannulas, we will follow the procedure that was listed earlier. You want to make sure that the interface is powered on and connected with the myograph cable. You can take a syringe with the blunt needle tip and, and tubing connected to the P1 three-way valve as well as the P2 three-way valve and apply either 8% acetic acid or distilled water through your lines. Again, you will need to monitor the actual pressure that you are adding as you can easily exceed the 200 and 250 millimeters of mercury of pressure. Flush each side while keeping an eye on the pressure and then make sure to push air through again at the end. If you notice that any of the three micrometers start to be a little more firm and not fluid when you are adjusting them, you can back them out all the way until they come loose. And you can actually stick these into the brown grease that came with your system as well. All you need to do is stick it in there, get some brown grease on there, and then screw the micrometer back in place. You will need to realign your cannulas after you do this, but that is all that is necessary in maintaining these micrometers. For more information, please refer to the 114 user manual found on the DMT website or additional resource videos.